For those of us who care about foreign reporting, the news about the news isn't good. Kidnappings, the headings, the disappeared. Records at the Committee to Protect Journalists underscore the threats with a grim menu of search options. Death by type, murdered, in crossfire or combat, on dangerous assignment, unsolved murders, murdered by country, murdered by year, journalists missing, journalists imprisoned, journalists exiled. Among the tallied this year was Anya Niederinghaus, a brilliant AP photographer and Neiman Fellow shot at close range by a police officer while reporting on the elections in Afghanistan. And yet, the axiom of a former editor of mine who covered Vietnam still holds. If you see a non-combatant running toward the danger while everyone else is running away, chances are he or she is a journalist. This is especially true of photographers, one of the finest of whom, Tyler Hicks, we honor tonight with the invitation to deliver the Joe Alex Morris Jr. Lecture. A news photographer with the greatest skill and equipment is nothing without proximity. We ask them to bear witness to humankind's most intimate moments, often at great risk to themselves. For those of you who have seen Tyler's photographs or will see them for the first time tonight, the immediacy is inescapable. The work that won him this year's Pulitzer Prize for breaking news photography displays the essence of his gift. A documentarian with an almost preternatural instinct, instinct to see around the corner of a developing story. Tyler was running errands near Nairobi's Westgate shopping mall when he heard the first sketchy reports of an unfolding tragedy. Stay away from Westgate, the early tweets said. As Tyler approached the mall, panic shoppers were streaming from the doors. He began shooting using the small camera he carries with him, then waited for his wife, a videographer, to bring additional equipment and his Kevlar helmet. Navigating through tremendous confusion, Tyler attached himself to the police officers and soldiers, weapons drawn, who began their dangerous canvas of the mall. Inside, Somali militants were waging a terror campaign that would last for nearly four days and leave more than 60 dead. In one of his images, a terrified mother lies on the ground, huddled against her two children. Above them is a cafe counter where a half cup of coffee, condiments, a pile of silverware, hint at the normalcy that preceded the chaos. In another, a heavily armed soldier crouches in the aisle of a store, surrounded by the pastel wrappings of our most routine errands, now made poignant. Shelves of Pampers, Safeguard soap, a display of Johnson's baby products. In these photographs Tyler made, we find the very definition of news. A moment ago, the world looked like that. Now it looks like this. Tyler has been working for the New York Times since 1999, and before that was a staff photographer for the Wilmington Star News in North Carolina. He has covered conflict in some of the most conflicted regions of the world, including Afghanistan, Kosovo, Syria, Haiti, Albania, East and West Africa. In the spring of 2012, while covering the revolution in Libya, Tyler and three other journalists were taken hostage for six days and beaten by pro-Qaddafi forces. The following year, he was on assignment with colleague Anthony Shadid when Mr. Shadid died, apparently from an asthma attack, and Tyler carried his body across the border into Turkey. Um, I think it's worth noting that this is the 10th <clears throat> anniversary of when um, Tony gave the Morris Lecture here at Neiman. I asked Bill Keller about Tyler. Bill was editor of the Times when Tyler and his colleagues were captured in Libya, and he said what I too have experienced at word that one of my journalists had gone missing. They don't prepare you for that in editor school, Bill said. He went on, but that's not the main thing that comes to mind when I think of Tyler. 
What always amazes readers about journalists like him, those who cover conflict, is the counter-instinctual instinct to run towards the danger rather than away from it. Who hears gunfire at a shopping mall and heads straight for it? If you haven't worked with a photographer like that, you might mistake this for recklessness, a cowboy temperament. That's the opposite of the truth in most cases. What's more important and less obvious is the skill and calculation, even wisdom, that go into the work. He went on, unlike writers who can cover conflict from a relatively safe distance, photographers need proximity and line of sight to do their jobs. And so they become masters of surveillance. They study a scene and try to calculate the flow of events. Also, he called home to ask his wife, Nicole, to bring his Kevlar helmet when she came to join the coverage. That's bravery, he said, but it's also wisdom. In reflecting recently on his work, Tyler emphasized not just the loss he has witnessed, but also the importance of remembering what was lost. He said, the thing about photography and the thing about combat is in a still image when you strip away everything, when you take away all the sound and explosions and bullets and adrenaline and the personal experience of being there, sometimes you're left with something very different. When I look at these pictures later, and I do look at these pictures a lot, I remind myself, he said, I think I owe it to myself and to those people to always remember this. Sometimes people say, you should try to compartmentalize things and try to put this behind you. And I say, no, that would be disrespectful. Tonight, we also bear witness to the journalists like Tyler, like Joe Alex Morris, like many of the photographers and reporters in this room who see and document the hard things for us so that we too can remember. Please join me in welcoming Tyler Hicks. <laughs> 